What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network. Today we are looking at my Zorak GX Lycanroc GX list for the standard format. Um, I don't feel I need to go into too much detail for most of the inclusions in this deck. I think it's a pretty simple deck to build. You're just looking at two stage one attackers with a couple techs and your usual support like N Sycamore and Lele. Um, I've seen a lot of lists up online for the expanded version of this deck, but I haven't seen too many for standard. Um, so let's get into it. We're starting out with four Zerua. Um, if you are running Rainbow or Dark in your deck, you should probably use the other Zerua. But we are only running Fighting Energy and Double Colorless Energy in this deck. So uh, you can attack with Ram for 20, but you should never be using Zerua unless you have to. Uh, so we run four of that. We run two of the Zorark with stand-in because its mind jack attack is great. It does 160 if your opponent has a full bench, 190 with a choice band if your opponent has a full bench. And stand-in is a really good attack because you can attach floatstone to this Zorark and stand it in and then retreat to whatever you want to have in the active spot. Next is two Zorark GX from Shining Legends. Uh, 210 HP all around. It's a really, really good card. Um, its ability trade is once during your turn before your attack. You may discard a card from your hand if you do draw two cards. Um, trade is really good. Add some consistency, getting cards that you need when you need them. <clears throat> um, Riot of Speeding is its first attack, a double colorless energy. It does 20 for every Pokemon you have in play. So if you have a full bench plus you're active, it does 120 or 150 with a choice band. Um, I'll talk about why 120 is a really good number in just a bit and why 150 also works out sometimes. Um, Trickster GX is a really good attack. Um, for two dark, choose one of your opponent's Pokemon's attacks and use it. So it doesn't just have to be the active. But we are not going to be using Trickster GX in this deck because we only run Fighting and Double Colorless Energy. Um, and we also don't run any Zorak Break because Zorak Break's attack needs a Dark Energy and we're not using Dark Energy here. We could switch this up to 4 Fighting and 4 Rainbow in the future, but I feel like we're going to be using Lycanroc GX's attack a lot because uh, it does a lot of damage. So we probably wouldn't need the rainbow energy in this deck at the moment. Uh, moving on, we are running for Rockruff. Um, corner, the defending Pokemon can't retreat during your opponent's next turn. And while kick 30, flip a coin of tails, this attack does nothing. 60 HP fighting type, nothing too special. Um, we're running four of those so we can consistently evolve our Lycanroc GX when we want to. To use its ability Bloodthirsty Eyes, which is like uh, Luxray G. Luxray, uh, what was it? Luxray Level X. Luxray Level X is Bright Look ability. In this Lycanroc GX, it's called Bloodthirsty Eyes. When you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active Pokemon. So it's giving you a free Lysander when you evolve, so you don't have to use Guzma for your turn. Um, as your turn supporter, so this is a really nice ability. Plus, we have Claw Slash for a Fighting and a DCE. It does 110, and then we have Dangerous Rogue GX for a Fighting and a Colorless. It does 50 damage for each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. So Dangerous Rogue GX does 200 if your opponent has four benched, uh, 250 if your opponent has five benched. So it's a really good GX that you can just use to get. A one hit KO on pretty much anything. Um, I'll also talk about why Lycanroc GX is better right now than it has been in the format and why I think this might be its time to shine in the American Standard format. Um, we play one Lycanroc non GX with the Dangerous Claws attack. Um, for a fighting 30 damage, if your opponent's active Pokemon is a basic Pokemon, this attack does 30 more damage. So this I really like because you can um, one-shot a Drampo with a Choice Band for just one energy using a non-GX attacker. Um, or without a Choice Band, you can kill a Drampa with Corner, 90, 
The defending Pokemon can't retreat during your opponent's next turn. You can also use Corner with a Choice Band to kill a Zorak GX, which is really nice. So we run one of that. We run one Turtonator. Um, Lycanroc GX is weak to Grass, so Galissapod GX has an advantage against us right off the bat because of that. And Turtonator GX is really, really good against Galissapod. Um, they can never one-shot your Turtonator GX. And we play three Acerola, so what I like to do against Galissapod is Shell Trap them with a Choice Band for 100 damage. If they attack back into the Turtonator, they take 80, and you can just Ace Arola it next turn and rinse and repeat. So Turtonator is really, really good against Galissapod. And we play two Tapu Koko promo because this deck does mediocre damage a lot of the time. So Flying Flip uh, softens up all of the uh, all of your opponent's Pokemon. So Flying Flip is really, really good on your first attacking turn. And then our last Pokemon is two Tapu Lele GX for its Wonder Tag and sometimes for Energy Drive. Um, I'm only playing two because we also have Zorark GX's trade ability to draw. So I'm testing out two and I've been liking it so far. I never really need a third. Um, sometimes one will be prized, but even then I'm usually okay just using the first Lele to get your Bridget and then using Zorak GX's trade ability to draw in the mid and late game. Going on to trainers, we have one field blower. Um, two would definitely be very nice. Um, I'm probably going to fit in a second one soon. When I do take something out, it will probably be um, the third float stone or the third acerola but I really don't want to have to take either of those out. Um, so most of the time you can just Guzma the Garbotoxin and kill it um, because your Lycanroc does 110. Your Zorak GX will usually be doing at least 100. Um, your regular Zorak will usually be doing at least 100. So you can usually Guzma it up if you have the Guzma. So Field Blower isn't... Two Field Blowers aren't necessary, but they would be nice to have. Um, two Rescue Stretcher, because, um, we only play two of each Zorark, and sometimes one will be prized, and you want to get the one that was knocked out back. Also, if you have a Lycanroc GX that was knocked out, and you have a Rock Ruff on bench, you just Rescue Stretcher the Lycanroc back, and Bloodthirsty Eyes, and you have a Guzma effect for the turn without the Guzma, pretty much. So, Rescue Stretcher, I think, too, is really nice, um... I could possibly drop the second Rescue Stretcher for a second Field Blower. I'll have to see which one I need more in testing. Um, four Ultra Ball, pretty standard. Um, three Acerola. So I'm running the three Acerola because um, Lycanroc GX has an ability that you want to reuse over and over with Bloodthirsty Eyes. And also the Turtonator. Acerola really helps Turtonator. Um, get a lot of use. You get a lot of value out of Turtonator GX against Galissapod with Acerola. Um, really, Acerola is just nice if your opponent can't hit the 210 to kill Zor GX or the 200 to hit Lycanroc or the 190 to hit Turtonator. You just grab an Acerola with your trading and draw into it or with your Tapu Lele and you go search for it and you completely heal your Pokemon, just set up a new one and keep going. So Acerola is really nice to set back your opponent when they think they're about to get a prize card next turn. Uh, sorry, I just uh, clicked the uh, delete on the Bridget, so I just removed Bridget from the deck accidentally. Let's pop that baby back in there. And we're good to go. Okay, so the next card is Bridget. Um, again, two of this would be nice, but I only run one for space. Um... It's only prized 10% of games on average, so you'll usually have it when you need it. Um, most decks have been running 3 or 4 Guzma. This one we're only running 2 in because we have Lycanroc GX's Bloodthirsty Eyes for bringing up our opponent's Pokemon when we need them to be brought up to the active spot. So 2 Guzma in this deck is fine. It's usually more than enough. 4N um, for consistency. 3 uh, Sycamore for consistency. Four choice bands, so we're always hitting for as most damage as, as much damage as we can. Um, especially with a deck like 
uh, having Zorak GX as an attacker, where our max damage is 120. We want to be hitting the 150 when we can. Um, three float stone, four DCE, and eight fighting energy. So, um, I like this deck because Zorak GX has just come out, and a lot of people, like myself, will be trying Zorak GX in their decks at League Cups, at League Challenges, online, wherever you play. <clears throat> and Lycanroc GX gets a, gets an easy one-hit knockout on Zorak GX. So Lycanroc GX is really good for that. Um, Lycanroc GX also one-shots Drampa, as well as Ly uh, Lycanroc non-GX one-shots Drampa. And if you've been watching the competitive circuit, um, Vancouver Regionals just had a lot of Drampa garb. Um, so I think Lycanroc GX is in a really good spot because Drampa is, um, gaining its popularity back and Zorak GX just came out and that's going to have hype and popularity right off the bat. So Lycan, <clears throat> excuse me, Lycanroc GX is not only good for its ability right now, it's also really good for just hitting that 110 and hitting weakness with it as well as the non-GX Lycanroc and not leaving a GX up there to be KO'd. Um, Zorak GX is really good because it adds consistency and draw power to your deck with its trade. Um, it has 210 HP. It's 120 um, max damage if you have a full bench. Um, one shots a Trashalance Garbador, which is very good because, as I said, Dra uh, Drampa Garb is gaining popularity. Um, you could tech this deck with like an Espeon EX as your plan to uh, beat Gardevoir because you can flying flip and Espeon EX and then knock out whatever's left. But if you're thinking about running into a lot of Gardevoir at your local tournament, I probably just wouldn't play this variant. Um, it's not very strong against Gardevoir. They can uh, easily one-shot your Lycanrocks with three energies. Um, uh, they are resistant to Zorark. So I don't think this deck is worth teching to beat Gardevoir at this moment because uh, you should just go in trying to beat the other decks that it can beat, like Drampa Garb, like Zorak GX Mirrors, um, like Galissapod with the help of Turtonator. Um, so I, like I said, I wouldn't over tech this to try to beat Gardevoir. If you think you're going to play a lot of Gardevoir, just don't play this deck at the moment is my opinion. Um, I think this deck is really fun to play. I think it's really consistent. Um, I always feel like I have a good bit of options. Like I could either flying flip or I could mind jack or I could bloodthirsty eye something up and then hit it with uh, Lycanroc's corner so it can't retreat next turn. And I like decks that have a lot of options. Also playing the three ace of roll account is really nice because you can deny your opponent prizes frequently. So yeah, um, I think this deck is fun, I think it's consistent, and I think it has good matchups against a few things. I think it has a lot of 50-50s and winnable matchups because of all the choices you have and the different attackers you have. So try this deck out if you want. Tell me what you think about it. Let me know if you'd make changes to the list. I have a feeling a lot of people aren't going to like the Lycanroc non-GX that I have, but I think it's a cute card that can um, really help against Drampa because you can one shot the Drampa and not have a GX sitting out there and you can also one shot Zorak GX with it and again not leave a GX sitting out there so thank you for watching this deck profile on Zorak Lycanroc subscribe like and leave a comment see you next time